everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel, the best place for eczema warriors to get rid of the flares and get rid of the itch. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the differences between eczema and TSW. A lot of you guys are asking me whether or not your current rashes are eczema related or is it presenting like TSW. So I thought I would film a quick video on the differences between eczema and topical serum withdrawal so you can have a better understanding between the two. As a disclaimer for this video, I'm not a dermatologist or a doctor. This video is also also meant to provide educational content like it has been for all of my other videos and not intended to substitute medical advice. I'm going to be sharing with you guys the differences between eczema and TSW based on research, based on ITSAN, which is a website that talks all about topical serum withdrawal, as well as sharing with you guys my journey with eczema and TSW so that it can help you with yours. So before we dive into the differences between eczema and topical serum withdrawal, I want to let you guys know that clear eczema is open for enrollment. It is my signature group program that is 14 weeks long. It's for anybody dealing with eczema or TSW who is really struggling with flaring, the itching, and want a better method to help them feel better. So if you are an adult eczema or TSW warrior and you're really looking for support, accountability, you need help with your nutrition, with your stress and mindset, then this is exactly what CYE focuses on. Make sure you apply for the program and also book a call with me. The application form is for me to see if the program is a good fit for you and whether or not you meet the criteria. After you complete the application form, there is a link for you to book a call. The call is completely free. It's really for those who are super committed and you're really ready to get started and you have the resources for the investment. The call is basically for us to enroll you inside the program so we can get you started. If you're not entirely sure about joining the program, you can still hop on that call with me. We can talk about what's keeping you stuck with your current journey and I can offer some general advice to help you with yours. And then I can answer any of questions that you guys might have about the program itself. So again, make sure you apply and book a call at the description box below. There is a link there to apply for the program and then book after your application has been submitted. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's video. So the differences between eczema and topical seer withdrawal is really, really different, but sometimes it could seem like they are overlapping given that your TSW symptoms might be mild or your eczema symptoms might be quite severe. And sometimes it can be really confusing whether or not you are going through topical seer withdrawal still or your eczema is just flaring and really severe. So I'm gonna start off this video sharing with you guys the physical characteristics of eczema, and then we'll talk about the physical characteristics of TSW. I'm also gonna be sharing how to address both conditions because they're very, very different, and exactly the causes of both. So let's start off with eczema. So eczema, as you guys may know, it is not a skin condition. People always call it a skin condition, but it is not. Eczema is an inflammatory condition that is caused by either poor gut health microbiome changes, toxin overload, or it is caused by stress. So let's start off with eczema and exactly what that looks like. So with eczema, usually how it presents is in the inner creases of your elbows. Sometimes you'll get it on your hands. Um, it can look really patchy also very itchy and flaky as well. Usually where eczema presents is in the skin folds, so like I said, in the inner elbows, behind the knees. I used to get it a lot in the groin area where I used to wear, where I wear underwear. Um, and some people will even get it on their hands, on their face, or on their neck. So where eczema presents can really be different for every single person, but those are the common areas um, that you see in children, that you see in adults as well. Now these areas where they are affected by eczema are usually either patchy and red, or patchy red and itchy, or it can just be itchy. So it kind of depends. Um, sometimes you'll have dry patches that aren't very itchy, just the skin around there is very dry, and other times you'll have it very angry and red, but not so itchy. So it really just depends on your body, right? Everybody's eczema is very different, but generally speaking, it is quite patchy in certain areas of the body. Now, the causes of eczema is really different than TSW. So eczema, when you go to the doctor's office or the dermatologist's office, they'll always say, it's in your genes, right? You can't do anything about it. It's in your genes. You can't change your genes. You're just going to have to live with it forever. We now know in research that your eczema and your skin health is related to your gut. And so the causes of eczema often stem in the gut. Around 70 to 80% of your immune system is in your gut. 
So when your gut health isn't the best and it's not optimized and other issues will come up, eczema being one of them. Now, the root cause of eczema is not just gut related, also other things like toxin overload. For example, you have several organs in the body that does its work in eliminating toxins and waste on a daily basis. You have your lungs, which you breathe out of and breathe in. You have your kidneys, which help to cleanse your blood to make urine. You also have your bowels, which helps you go every morning or every night or whenever you go. And you also have your lymphatic system, which also helps to remove toxins and waste out of your body as well. And lastly, you also have your liver. I almost forgot about the liver. The liver is such an important organ when it comes to processing chemicals and toxins and medications as well and it's often forgotten. So when you have eczema, not only is it related to your gut health but it can also be related to the other systems as well. So the next time when you go to the doctor and the dermatologist and they say that eczema is only in your genes, you know that's not true because research tells us that there are so many root causes when it comes to eczema and it's not just your genes that is causing your skin to flare. So really looking into your gut health, looking into your toxic load, working with a practitioner to help you figure out what's really driving your rashes can really be a big game changer. We have a lot of clients who completed clear eczema in the past and they were able to find their root cause and also figure out exactly why they're getting their rashes when their doctor used to say that it's always gene related. Once they were able to figure out that maybe their eczema is related to their gut health or maybe their eczema is related to poor liver health, it really depends on the case. Once they started addressing that, they saw their skin significantly improve. So with eczema, it's a lot more easier, I would say, to heal versus TSW and I'll explain exactly why. So if you're dealing with just eczema and not TSW, thankfully, then don't lose hope because there are so many ways to heal it, you just have to know exactly what to do. Now you might be wondering, all right, I think I have eczema, but I'm wondering if I have TSW. The really sad thing about this is that, you know, after being on Instagram and sharing my personal story since 2015, I used to have my own Instagram account where it was mostly sharing my topical serum withdrawal journey. I noticed that over the past year or two that TSW is becoming more and more common. More and more people are going through it. More and more people are realizing that they're actually going through TSW and not having eczema. And it's really sad to see this because going through this condition is honestly traumatizing and it's a whole other video on another time. But if you're someone who has been on topical steroids for a while now, whether it's a couple years, whether it's on and off for all your life, then you're going to really learn in this video what to really look out for in terms of symptoms because it can be really obvious and it can not be. Um, and the biggest resource I usually recommend people to go to is itsan.org because they do have a section on their website where they talk about all the symptoms and characteristics of TSW, how to manage TSW. They have really good tips on there as well. So if you're someone who really is sure that you're going through TSW, that's a really good place to really look at as well as Facebook groups. Uh, there's a lot of TSW Facebook groups um, that support people going through this condition um, but be careful with Facebook groups like that because it can get overwhelming just to give you guys a warning but let's say you're watching this video right now and you're not really sure if you're going through TSW so what exactly are the characteristics of topical serum withdrawal with topical serum withdrawal it is really 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 different than eczema you guys it's a completely different condition it is a condition caused by steroid use, okay? It is caused by steroids, topical steroids. I know it's called topical steroid withdrawal, but I've seen it with oral steroids as well. Topical steroid withdrawal happens when you've been using steroids for a period of time, and when you notice that you come off of it, your skin starts to go crazy and starts to have those rebound flares. Usually, people who have used topical steroids quite a lot in their life and they decide to come off of it, with direction from their doctor or dermatologist, they will notice that their skin gets worse. And that makes sense because if you've been using steroids all your life, you're really suppressing the inflammation, right? It's like a Band-Aid solution. So if you're putting a Band-Aid onto a big wound without figuring out what caused the wound, if you rip it off, the wound isn't gonna heal, right? You gotta figure out what is actually causing that big wound to not heal. And so when you are slapping on a steroid um, for your eczema, you're covering up the inflammation, but you're not really understanding where the inflammation is coming from. Now, of course, I don't want you guys to think this is your fault, right? Oftentimes, as an eczema warrior, we are not informed by our doctor 
or by our dermatologist that you cannot use steroids for a long period of time because there are so many side effects when it comes to steroids. There is thinning of the skin, there is pigmentation, atrophy of the skin, and delayed wound healing, amongst other side effects that can really happen if you're using, especially those strong steroids on your skin without proper direction. Now I'm not here to recommend you guys to go off of steroids. I'm not in that position to do that. I'm not a doctor. But if you guys are more curious about the side effects of topical steroids, head on over to itsand.org. They have all of that information on their website. Or you can simply read this research article, for example, and I'll link below the article so you can read about the dangers of topical steroids. Now I want to talk a little bit more about the physical characteristics of TSW because it does present really differently than eczema. So unlike eczema, TSW kind of presents more widespread. There's a lot of widespread inflammation, whether it's all over your chest, all over your face, um, down your arms. A really classic symptom of topical serum withdrawal are red sleeves where the inflammation goes all the way up to your wrist like a sleeve and it kind of just stops here and it spares the palms and the hands. However, for me, unfortunately, when I was going through topical serum withdrawal, um, I did have the red sleeves, but I also had um, my palms affected as well. So that was kind of my journey, which is different than a lot of people, um, but that can also be a symptom as well. It doesn't have to always be red sleeves. It doesn't always have to be not on your palms. Again, everybody's body is very different, but these are the symptoms that are very common. They're also the same symptoms that are written down on the ITSEN website. So as I mentioned earlier, sometimes you'll know that you're going through TSW if when you stop using the topical steroids you were on, you notice that your skin gets worse. It gets worse and worse and worse, or you keep having to use stronger and stronger steroids without noticing that you are seeing any improvement. So your body's actually becoming reliant on the steroids that they no longer work. That's kind of how I figured out that my eczema was no longer responding to steroids. I was using the most potent steroid, clobetasol. Super scary, you guys. I was applying tubes and tubes of it all over my body and it was not responding anymore. So I had to figure out a different solution. I went cold turkey, which honestly, don't do that you guys. You never wanna do cold turkey for anything. It's really dangerous. Go seek help from your dermatologist if you are, but I had no idea what T TSW was back in 2015. So I did stop steroids, cold turkey, and it was really scary. And I had all the symptoms of topical serum withdrawal. Um, some other symptoms you guys really want to be aware of is um, severe flaking of the skin. Very different from eczema. It almost feels like you're snowing all the time. Big flakes, small flakes, it's all there everywhere. Um, that can be a very obvious symptom of topical serum withdrawal. Also, if you're experiencing a lot of oozing, um, I know with eczema you could ooze too. Topical serum withdrawal, you also ooze as well, but it's a lot more significant. And the scientific reason of why um, you ooze when you're going through topical serum withdrawal is because when you're using steroids, you're actually constricting your blood vessels to reduce the inflammation. But as soon as you take the steroid away, the blood vessels actually start to dilate, and when they dilate, they allow the ooze and the fluids to come through your skin. So because you've taken away the steroid, you're allowing your blood vessels to dilate, dilate, dilate without constricting, and so it ends up causing more inflammation and also more oozing than someone who's dealing with eczema. The other thing to note for topical steroid withdrawal is that it feels really different. It feels really different than eczema. Like you will know when it's not how your eczema usually feels. There isn't actually a diagnosis for TSW, this is all based on symptoms, but oftentimes I'll talk to you guys in the DMs or talk to my clients and they'll always say this feels different. It doesn't feel like my eczema, it feels a lot worse, there's a lot of burning, a lot of itching where it feels like it's in your bones, like the deep bone itch is very common for topical steroid withdrawal sufferers and so that's something to also look out for as well. The other thing too with TSW is it often cycles, so what that means is that you'll, you'll flare, you'll get better Better, and then you'll flare again, you'll um, go through this insane amount of redness, insane amount of itching, and then you'll start flaking, and then after flaking you'll heal, and then after you heal you flare again. So it tends to cycle and cycle and cycle, and it's really annoying and it's really unfortunate, but it's a part of the process when it comes to healing, and it can take several months and even several years depending on the case. 
Now, the true difference between eczema and TSW, besides the fact that one is a drug withdrawal and the other related to your gut health, toxin overload, and other root causes, the other difference is that eczema can be effectively healed by addressing root causes and it can typically happen within a reasonable amount of time. Versus TSW, it takes a lot more time when it comes to healing because you're dealing with a drug withdrawal, but that doesn't mean you don't address your root cause. So a big mistake I hear in the community is that most people think that they just have to wait. You have to wait until the topical steroids kind of clear out of their body and they only give it time to heal without realizing that time is a healer. I'm not saying it's not, but what you do with that time is also very important. If you're someone who has been going through topical steroid withdrawal for many, many years and you haven't really seen biggest improvements or you haven't really seen much change, then that tells us that there's something else going on as well that you also want to address. For example, I have clients who were going through TSW for five, six years, and then when they came to me, they also had a lot of gut issues, a lot of toxin overload issues, and so we had to work on that in order to get their skin healing, and by doing that, they were able to start seeing improvements in their skin. Did it take a lot of work? Yes, because TSW may still be there, but at least we're addressing those root causes that are still gonna be there even though you are going through topical steroid withdrawal. So just because you're going through topical steroid withdrawal does not mean you don't have other issues going on. With my own TSW clients, I see a lot of gut issues, constipation, gut dysfunction. Stress is actually one of the biggest triggers for TSW and makes TSW worse. And I also see a lot of nutrient deficiencies with TSW. Um, a lot of it stems from going on really restrictive diets when people are going through topical steroid withdrawal, which by the way, you guys, if you're going through TSW, diet isn't the only thing. It's not going to make your TSW heal faster, especially if you're in the early stages of TSW. Just open up your diet, you guys. Just eat more foods because restricting your food during TSW is not going to make that big of a difference at all, actually. I actually have a whole YouTube video on this, why I don't think time is the only healer for topical steroid withdrawal. If you wanna check it out, you can go to this video right here and listen into it and see if that resonates with you and whether or not there may be other root causes going on while you're going through topical steroid withdrawal and knowing that you still have to address them if you want to fully recover and fully figure out the whole picture. So whether you guys are going through eczema or going through topical steroid withdrawal, I really hope you found this video insightful. Learning about what eczema looks like and the differences between the two in terms of how it presents, what it feels like, and also how you actually approach it in order to heal it. Because it's very different, right? Eczema is a lot easier to heal versus topical steroid your withdrawal, but knowing that addressing root causes for both of them is still really important. If you guys are looking for more support with your eczema or topical steroid withdrawal, feel free to reach out to me, you guys. You guys know that Clear Eczema is open up for enrollment. You want to join me and other eczema TSW warriors to better support you in your journey, have this community and accountability, making sure that you guys are on the right track with your root causes, your nutrition, and your supplements, then CYE is definitely gonna help you with this. So again, you can apply for the program and book a call at the link in the description box below. And that's it, I'm really excited to review your application and see if I can help you in your journey. As always, if you guys really enjoyed this video, make sure you like this video, hit subscribe, and also leave me a comment on any questions that you may have about this video topic. Before I let you guys officially go, also check out my two other videos right here because every Monday I release more videos on eczema, on TSW, mindset, stress, and more. Thanks everyone for watching today's video. Good luck on your eczema and TSW journey. Bye now.